Good evening, everybody, and I'd like to uh, call our Budget and Finance Committee meeting to order. And um, I'll open up the discussion myself here and uh, just give a little overview of some things that uh, I'd like to, us to keep in mind and update you on. So uh, <clears throat> at first glance, so with the, the budget, it's good to see that uh, the executive's budget uh, came in just under this year's New York State imposed tax cap of 1.95%, uh, while continuing to use less fund balance than the previous three years to balance the budget. Um, and I know that the um, uh, press release that we had uh, indicated uh, it came in at 183 versus the uh, 195, but if you look at your uh, tentative uh, tax rate chart here, you can also see that um, there's a small amount of omitted taxes uh, that Sean and I were discussing that are really also part of the calculation, bringing it pretty much right up to the brim of the 195 uh, at 19484%. So uh, certainly we're right up there with little wiggle room uh, to play with. Uh, in addition, after an informal budget discussion we had with the county executive and treasurer last month regarding some potential expectations for this budget uh, that we hope they keep in mind, uh, they included using less fund balance in the previous three years and also attempting to bring in many, as many departments as possible under their 2020 budgets. It, it was also encouraging to see that 9 out of 25 departments on your budget year-over-year -year comparison sheet uh, came in uh, with year-over-year -year reductions based on some combination of cost cutting or revenue enhancement that was greater than their proposed expenses. Another goal we had in mind was for the aggregate year-over-year -year departmental uh, changes to be less than they were the previous year uh, and as you look at the bottom of the budget comparison worksheet on the second page you can see that the total amount of uh, increases proposed here on an aggregate basis are just under $437,000. And that's 0.36% of this proposed $120.1 million budget. And it's actually the lowest year-over-year -year increase we've had in the last four years. Uh, to uh, bring you up to speed, last year uh, it was 600, a little over 651000 of that budget, uh, or 0.5% of that budget. Uh, 19s was 447,000 or 0.4 percent of that budget, and 18 was uh, at 606, 606,000 or 0.5 percent of the 18 budget. So you know, I, I feel that for our budget to experience less than a 1 percent year-over-year departmental increase for four years in a row is a positive trend, especially keeping in mind that the consumer price index increases uh, over those years is, would range from two to three percent. And it's good to know that uh, the executive and his staff are finding ways to help us operate under the average increased cost of uh, doing business throughout the country. Uh, it appears also that the executive and the treasurer did a pretty good job of eliminating some unnecessary spending in this budget, with one primary example being the elimination of unfilled positions. Primarily in DSS, we're a little under 80,000 of unfilled positions that historically had been carried up from year to year were removed. And that was on top of 333,000 of the same move last year in the DSS budget uh, last fall. And uh, as we all know and have read, they're proposing to use 125,000 less of fund balance in this budget that, as opposed to last year by plugging in two and a half million uh, versus last year's uh, two million six and a quarter. You know, and I've said this in the past, uh, you know, we remain very concerned about the use of fund balance to help balance each year's budget and would obviously prefer to grow it rather than deplete it. And we've attempted to monitor that closely on a monthly basis through our dashboards, through our departmental reports, as well as through this budget process. But it is virtually impossible to avoid using fund balance to balance a budget each year when uh, there's millions of dollars of federal and state mandated services are passed on to us. We, we get reimbursed 80 to 90% of it. And this in turn leaves our county 10 to 20% short every operating year on delivering, uh, delivering million dollars of uh, worth of these services. 
uh, and with, you know, without, uh, with few new immediate sources of revenue available to offset those reimbursement shortfalls. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, since we began monitoring our expenses regularly on dashboards in the beginning of 2017, uh, I'll give you a little comparison uh, of what we budgeted versus what we ended up using. In 17, we budgeted 3,897. We actually used a million 86, leaving uh, 2.81 unused. Uh, in 2018, we budgeted 382, 3,820, used 366,000. Uh, leaving a little under three and a half million unused. In 19, we budgeted 3.7 million, <clears throat> actually used a million 14,000, leaving a little under 2.7 million unused. And this past year, we budgeted 2,625, and of course, that's yet to be determined, but I believe we're on track for using less than that. And I always feel that this is worth mentioning because uh, oftentimes, during our budget proceedings each fall, a local narrative tends to focus on how much fund balance is being used to balance our budget, which sometimes can cause some angst amongst our constituents about the, its potential rapid evaporation when it uh, actually ends up amounting to much uh, less concern. And that's because they don't always hear the rest of the story, uh, as Paul Harvey would say, when our final fiscal year end statements produced halfway to three quarters of the way through the next year, and we're able to determine that far less fund balance was used than what we plugged into the budget to balance it the previous fall. And we all know that this is largely attributable uh, to the fact that our sales tax has grown measurably over the last four years. Four year average from 2016 to 2019 is a million and a half a year it's grown. And although 2020 is not quite on that same pace due to COVID's impact on the local economy, as you recall through our August dashboards, uh, we're on target to be a million dollars over uh, our 2020 budgeted figure of 31 million. And uh, this also lends credence to the executive conservatively budgeting only a half a million dollar increase up to 31 and a half million for sales tax income this year in this budget, especially, you know, with the uncertainty of COVID, COVID's impact continuing to uh, loom over our local economy going into next year. But we need to continue Reinforcing this mindset, this trend of using less fund balance to balance our budget in, in future years to come, you know, in an effort to preserve it as long as possible, and uh, while we look for other ways to grow revenue. And by budgeting a hundred and a quarter less than last year, the executive's budget continues to follow that trend. Uh, we also need to be mindful of the fact that this year's proposed budget will also lead to a tax increase in only one of the 11 municipalities within the county the sole exception being the city of Amsterdam, whose equalization ratio once again went down for the second consecutive year, this time from 67 to 61%. And I think it's important to remind that a reduction in the municipality's equalization ratio is a very good thing on one hand, because it means property values in that particular municipality are rising based on the average sale price of homes within that municipality over the last 12 months. But conversely, it can also lead to a tax increase if that municipality's equalization ratio drops measurably. And we remind that the equalization ratios are the sole responsibility of each individual municipality, and declining equalization ratios can be reversed if the affected municipality undertakes a revaluation, albeit at a cost. In fact, had the city's equalization ratio remained at 67% this year, they would have only seen a 1.76% increase, or 32 cents a thousand, from $18.18 to $18.50. But the drop in the equalization ratio from 67 to 61%, uh, it's, it's slated to increase 9.23%, or $1.67 a thousand, up to $19.85 a thousand. So to offer some perspective on actual cost impact on a city taxpayer, an Amsterdam home assessed for $100,000, which at the now 61% equalization ratio would equate to a home actually worth $164,000, they would see their county tax bill go up $167 uh, this year, or just under $14 a month. On half that assessment on $50,000, $82,000 house, 84 bucks for the year, seven bucks a month. 
So uh, as was also cautioned last year when four of 11 municipalities saw county tax increases, please continue to keep in mind it would not be a fiscally responsible move for us to adjust the county budget by using more of our fund balance to help offset or eliminate property tax increases in other municipalities that are a byproduct of rising property values in those municipalities, those rising values of which we have no control over. And finally, let's not forget that this year our executive and treasurer also had the additional task of navigating a potential impact of the COVID pandemic on our New York State reimbursement into 2021, where cuts of up to 20% are being considered and could eventually occur in certain portions of our budget. And the administration did do this, giving some attention primarily to the DSS budget where these 20% cuts would most likely be apt to occur. So uh, in conclusion, although it's our legislative responsibility not to marginalize any increase in, in our budget, because all increases in the budget should be taken very seriously, uh, given their potential impact on the taxpayers we represent, it appears this first draft of the budget by the executive and treasurer reflects examples of the direction we attempted to give them in our preliminary discussions. The budget comparison sheet here that I referred to also shows the shifts in each department's budget including our largest departments, which will also come in handy for our meeting next Tuesday the 13th. But certainly uh, we need to get some more insight into some of these changes, uh, and that's uh, where we will uh, start here. Um, and you can see um, from this budget comparison worksheet, which you know we've used in the past, uh, Sean was able to produce it and also create explanations and read underneath some of the more significant year-over-year -year changes, whether they be positive or negative, has already put some notes in there for us to key on as we discuss them. So um, at this point in time, um, I certainly before I move over to our uh, executive and our treasurer and uh, perhaps start moving down this page uh, a little bit, um, I'd like to put, you know, let the, any other legislators speak at this particular point in time uh, before we move there. Legislator DeChesse. Yes, um, just a couple of questions for, for the county executive and perhaps the treasurer. Um, not with respect to the actual budget that, that's here in front of us, but uh, regarding the changes that we might have to make depending on state cuts. Um, in particular, I'd like to know what you think are, and I understand that some of those cuts are going to involve uh, cuts in mandated services, which will reflect uh, decreases in, in our uh, expenditures. But just in general terms, um, if if the uh, if the cuts come in at 20 percent, like a lot of people are, are talking about, um, how do you anticipate uh, our ability to adjust within this budget? Sure, I think that's certainly the, the big hot topic, not just here, but in every county right now. And there's, there's been a, a somewhat consistency in approach from what I've seen. The, the two budgets that are clearly affected are public health and uh, Department of Social Services. The problem, Legislator Duchesne, that we're struggling with is you don't know when, where, or how they're going to come. And to go through each individual program area, I mean, our estimates are one to two million dollars could be, could be, you know, in the ballpark of what we're expecting to be cut should that happen. But with that said, whether it's mandated or not mandated, that's going to make a difference because if the revenue is gone and we can cut the expense, we will cut the expense, which means a loss of service. But those mandated programs, I think, are what you're referring to. We've done a couple things. Uh, public health is is preparing. Uh, you know, uh, it has prepared a, a B budget, a worst case scenario budget, but there has been no confirmation on any of those actions. But in DSS's budget, we did reduce the um, administration uh, lines uh, from what was requested from the department to build in some cushion, because I, in my personal opinion, I think Medicaid administration is, is most likely to be cut because it's the easiest to cut, rather than going through um, a variety of program areas that have a combination of local, state, and federal funding for one program or service, we, you know, I thought the most likely source of a cut would just come right off the top on, on Medicaid administration, and that's 
primarily in two lights. And Sean, what were those two lights? Uh, 36, 10, 46, 10. So, so we, we took off some funding there to try to build in a little cushion. But this is a budget that wholeheartedly uh, shows that, you know, we, we cannot predict it right now. And there is a potential and a very real potential for mid-year adjustments. And we will, like, we will not likely see that until March or April when the legislature is back working on the budget. So to do that right now and just to try to pick and choose and predict where the state was going to cut in these various programs was just something that was, was unattainable at this moment and, and, and would have inflicted some severe harm on, on our workforce at the county. And we decided, and I decided, that we try to really build in other um, conservative estimates for revenues and expenses wherever we could in the budget to best prepare, similar to the way we did it this year uh, with the current budget, furloughs, uh, keeping positions open, really trying to do everything we can to prepare for what may be coming. Um, and then you also have the variable out there, you know, should we get federal uh, help down the line? We don't know. So, so there's a lot of variables there. I'm giving you a long-winded answer, but this is something we really racked our brains about uh, for weeks, trying to say, okay, should we you know, just, just bite the bullet now and cut? But I, at the end of the day, I couldn't do that because I, I just didn't have any certainty to what's coming. And that's what a lot of the other counties are doing. They're, they're, they're putting together you know, a budget that this budget largely builds off the goals and priorities of last year. Um, and now as we're you know, looking towards uh, this new budget, we, we, we know that if things change, we're going to have to come back and address it. But until then, I'm not sure just trying to predict what the state's going to do or assume that the federal government is not going to provide relief. Um, it, it just, I, I just couldn't get behind making those, those big cuts at this point, knowing that we, we might have to deal with that next year. So that's why in, in some of my discussions, with legislators, with the treasurer, with the public. I want to make it real clear that next year is going to be a year likely that we're going to have to adjust in one way or another. Now, hopefully it's modest adjustments, and hopefully the federal government does come through for us. It doesn't appear it's happening anytime soon, but as we go forward, it, it's going to have to happen. And it's just a matter of the how, the when, and the why. Just if Sean walked that out, anything to that? I'll just piggyback on him. And, and another problem we had is we're getting no direction from the state yet. None. Their they're, they're cookie cutter answer is the potential is there for a 20% cut. And even the cuts that are happening this year, we're being told they're not necessarily cuts, they're delay, delays in payment. So we're still being reassured that we're going to get payment, but again, there's, and, and I'm on the control room call every day. These questions are being asked not by you know just myself, but Herkimer County, Oneida County, and Siegel County, and and we simply cannot get an answer or even any direction which way to go. And and today, actually, my question was, um, I, I'm starting to see the impact of the lockdown uh, having a, a serious impact on mental health, suicide, the domestics, and and all these issues that these programs are designed to help people. So now we're heading down a, a, a real nasty situation where you know small rural county has been doing very well with COVID, keeping numbers down. Um, obviously, it's had an impact, but I'm starting to feel that the 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 worst, the you know the the effect of what we've been doing to try to stay safe for COVID is now having a tremendous impact, and now with looming cuts, you know, we're not going to have the resources to deal with that. So um, it, it's a very frustrating situation, but um, we cannot simply get any direction, and quite frankly. Uh, with, uh, I believe, most of the legislature, if not all, is up this year. I, I think it's unlikely we're going to see anything before November. And really, you know, as we start getting into February, uh, March, and with the budget, uh, you know, a deadline being at end of April, I think that's, we're really not going to know until then unless Congress does something um, in the uh, beginning of the, the, the new year or at, at the end of in December. Thank you. Senator Patel, you had your hand up. Yeah, my question, when we look at the city of Amsterdam with the 9% increase, their, their, their uh, equalization rate dropped and their values went up. So how is that going to affect their sales tax distribution? Should we see an increase in that? It has no effect on the city because they get a flat percentage. Okay. They get a flat 
flat 15% of the first 3% and they get a flat 18% uh, of the additional one. So that has to be zero. There, there is the zero impact for them as far as sales tax goes. Second, number nine? Yes, please. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. All right, uh, Matt and uh, Sean, do you have anything else you would like to lead in with before perhaps we start sure. you know, taking a look at some of these uh, shifts in, in your departments? Well, I'd like to, I'd just like to uh, thank the the board for you know having the conversations. I mean, this is technically the budget kickoff, but I think we're far beyond a kickoff at this point. I think we've had a number of conversations, both individually and collectively. And I did my best to embody those discussions within this budget. Um, I think there's room to work either way on revenues and expenses, depending, uh, you know, what the wishes of the board are. And for example, things of, you know, there's things that clearly can be taken out of this budget still, if that's what the legislature wants to choose uh, to do. There's things that can be added to the budget if that's what the legislature wants to choose to do. Um, and I think, you know, as we go forward, that's going to be an interesting part of the discussion. Also, as we look to revenues, um, both sales tax, but also, um, you know, uh, revenues in the sheriff's budget, I think are, are discussion. Um, and he's, well, really, he's there. It's the sheriff and DPW. You know, there were some requests for some vehicles um, that were not fully uh, satisfied in my budget, but partially satisfied. I think if we want to pull back, we certainly can pull back. If we want to, you know, uh, keep making some of these investments, we can. And I think we have the wiggle room to go that way, depending on what the wishes of the board are. The one note that I just would like to um, uh, just just really kind of take off the list before we even get started, and then I'll open it, turn it back to you, uh, Legislator Pappas. Uh, the the increase in the county executive budget, and and I remember last year we had a very interesting discussion about uh, our insurance and the lateness of it. And, and so we wanted to be extra careful this year to not, um, uh, you know, put you in that situation again. So what we did is, A, we've moved the budget process back. We're currently working on getting numbers. But we did build in some cushion because we don't have the actual, uh, you know, return from the RFP to tell us exactly what our number is. But we did budget a big increase because we are expecting an increase. And that $175,000 you'll see here, um, $60,000 of it was a new policy year over year. And then also the, uh, the increase, which we're expecting, does have some cushion built into it. So didn't want to catch you guys by surprise again. I know, uh, Chairman, that was an issue that you were concerned about. Uh, we've been getting uh, and, and, and are continuing to get. Megan, thank you, has been corralling a lot of the information uh, from our broker who will be here with us uh, during this process to to talk about it But we didn't want any surprises that led to additional uses of the fund balance down the road And we think with that number we should be fine and it's built in to um, To this budget moving forward. I would also like to add that even though you have not approved a, um, a Contract or agreement so to speak for the uh, non bargaining um, a an increase to their salaries was included in here so then that way, which was similar to CSEA and other, other uh, agreements that we've settled, so that does not have to be built into fund balance in the, it, it, as we go through the next year. And also, um, just, just one last little topic is, you know, um, we are budgeting for a flat uh, one year for snowplow contracts, which will be coming up to you uh, this month, but you do see an increase in there. That's because we addressed the budget mid-year um, and, um, you know, it, it, we're still going off of those numbers for uh, the, the adopted budget for these purposes. So uh, just a couple notes that, that came off quick on the top of my head, but I think we've hit the ground running and looking forward to answering questions and concerns uh, as we go forward. Now, if Sean has anything to add to that? Or? Um, is there also a building for other negotiating uh, units, bargaining units? So um, there are a couple that are going to be up. We did usually include that. This year we did not. I did have a conversation with a number of legislators. It's one of those things we can include a number in the budget and uh, in a way forecast what we're expecting or we could use fund balance. I chose to keep that out this year um, and uh, that's, that's where we're at on that. But the ones that I could build in, such as the non-bargaining, I tried to build in. And that was a strategic move, correct? correct? Yeah. From the standpoint of, if it's in print, 
you know exactly people, what you want. People know what to negotiate to. Exactly. So, so I just wanted to be up front and say, and thank you for that question. That was going to be one of my discussion points. Uh, I, 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 after you know talking to a number of legislators, I did feel that that was was the way to go, as long as there was an understanding that um, you know we're going to have to uh, address that during the year. Now, again, you know, there's there's a number of units. We're good through CSEA through the end of next year. Uh, we, we're, we're close on, on, on to, to, to current on pretty much all of our bargaining units. So, um, you know, there, there, there's going to be an expense, but it, it's manageable. And we can provide you, and especially Nicole, when she does her presentation next week with some very specific numbers on that. Uh, as to what it could be. As to what it could be, as well as um, she has a, a, a host of information about some of the cost saving measures we've done through her office this year related to the furloughs and keeping positions open, which has, have saved us considerable. All right. Let's look at one more question on sales tax. I thought that we had a lot of things in town of Florida come off pilot this year, or is that next year? Or wasn't the um, target one came off last year? Last year. Okay. Um, I believe Helen Marks comes off. Thank you. So you'll, you'll see some adjustments. And then you also have the second portion of the I believe target. there's one more year of target two. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Executive Austin Ford, I would also ask you as, um, just so this doesn't become, you know, where's Waldo mm -hmm. exercise, um, that you've, you know, we're, you just stated and you've told us individually and collectively at some point in time that there are places to cut, there are places to add. Yes. As we go through these departments, rather than us, sure. uh, I, would, I would rather you say, now we could do this with this line item for sure. your consideration. We could increase it, we could decrease it for this reason or that reason. Absolutely. Just so we don't have to any gamesmanship. And, and, and there are some areas, I'm not saying there's a ton, but the, I think the needle could swing a half a million dollars either way, depending on the priorities of the board. But we all, I guess we all have to be prepared uh, based on these strategies and COVID that, you know, during the year, even though one of the mantras of creating the dashboard and running with it several years ago in departmental reports was to not be cold cocked by surprises of people coming in saying I need 200,000 for this reason or 300,000 for that reason, which was a, a fantastic premise upon which to predicate all that stuff. But this year, I think we're gonna have to be open to the fact that it could happen as it pertains to the New York State cuts and as it pertains to some some, some employment contracts. Uh, Legislator go, Kelly. Going through the budget process, have we made sure that contracted expenses are included in here at the rate of the contract so we're not coming back in January? Well, we've got to fix this. we got to. I, I'm, I'm not going to sit here like an engineer did a long time ago and tell you absolutely I didn't miss anything, but I can tell you that it was we, certainly a priority and. Um, you know, really, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I lean heavily on Sean on that because he knows uh, and when he sees those increases in lines when we go through those, those meetings and Sean is in every meeting, he asks specifically what they are and we refer to the backup. And that's really predominantly where you're seeing the increases. Again, it's building off of last year, a lot of the same themes, um, you know, the, the labor contracts, the maintenance agreements, those are, the, those are the things we really can't do a whole lot about. And those discretionary items that I'm talking about and we're talking about, where there's some wiggle room, um, you know, are, are, are few and far between, but you know, it could total up to some serious money when we're talking about cars um, and revenue, uh, you know, even the sheriff's uh, jail line alone. I mean, he uh, has, I think, brought in uh, a new recent, I don't wanna say surge, but there's been a number of new federal inmates and his estimates, I think you all have seen them, um, you know, it's not just the expense side. I think there's some wiggle room on the revenue side, but we chose very conservative revenue estimates, and I would point to the county clerk's budget, where we've had a revenue number in there for a number of years that we've never met. So when it shakes out at the end of the year, that's always in the minus column. That has been addressed. That will not be in the minus column next year. And that's that's a good move. You know, I mean, you're, you're bringing it 
back to reality, you know, so. Um, all right, well, let's start out with sure. Department 1, the County Executive, and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to skip over any of these, uh, if anybody wants to comment on any of them, but obviously the ones that are worth most of our discussion are the ones where the comments are already written in red because they are the most impactful. So uh, Matt uh, sure. just did explain to us about the insurance. Uh, you can see that in his department um, uh, under unallocated insurance. You know, the vast majority of it uh, was at, you know, 450 uh, for last year's budget up to six and a quarter, you know, so that, that's that's where it is <laughs> yeah. on that line item. But any other color you want to add? No, I, it's largely unchanged. The big, uh, the big item was the insurance and, um, you know, there's going to be some, uh, as we go through this process, we'll obviously get the specifics when we actually get the policies and the low bidders. Uh, but this, like I said, did build in uh, an extra 25000 above what a very uh, conservative estimate was originally. So, again, did not want to be in the same situation as we were last year. I apologize for that and wanted to address it. And then that way, if we come in under, then you'll be pleasantly surprised rather than upset with me. And you know what? Not only that, Matt, I, I think it's good because of the, the concept that there's a couple other areas where we could be, you know, uh, make need to make an adjustment during the year. So if you had things like the non-bargaining where mm -hmm. you could feather it in, this insurance where you could feather it in, it's better to feather in those which we know can happen because we know there's going to be some that will, will likely happen, but we don't know how much. Yeah. You know, so. All right, any other uh, questions on uh, Department 1 with the County Executive there? Uh, our next department, emergency management, fire services, net change year over year, a little, a little over eleven thousand bucks. Anybody, anybody got any concerns there? Want to discuss that? Just what, what's driving that? The, the one, the one, the biggest item, half of that is uh, in the twenty twenty budget, only a quarter of a clerical position was uh, a quarter of a part time, or half of a part time position was for clerical. This the 2021 budget puts uh, that part-time clerical person in for the year. Wow. That goes from six thousand to twelve thousand. The the clerical position for that office. Thank you. The part-time clerical position. All right, on to the county treasurer. You can see a, a positive, you know, a favorable net, a negative net swing here of a little over three hundred thousand bucks. Uh, and the explanation, uh, you know, we. The components there are the uh, the sales tax going up a half a million, but uh, us netting out 215 of that that we have to distribute to the rest of the municipalities, uh, and also some increased revenue and expenditures for solid waste uh, to reflect the current levels of tonnage, uh, which have contributed uh, to this positive swing, um, you know, in the budget's favor here with it being uh, a little over 300000 less year over year. Let yes. elaborate. The, the, the biggest change on the solid waste side is uh, the last couple of years we've been budgeting based on about 40,000 tons through the system. Uh, historically, as you've seen with the dashboard, we've been over, uh, we're, we're right, we're, um, it's closer to about 50,000 50, tons. And another change next year is our contract for recyclables is up. Uh, and that means there is no market right now for recyclables. So instead of getting, making fifty to hundred thousand dollars in the sale of recyclables, we are now going to next year have to pay probably close to a hundred thousand to get to dispose of recyclables. So that's why you'll see that the the larger increase in the uh, solid waste expenses. But that on the flip side. We're going to have to start charging for the recyclables to come into the, our the transfer stations. Legislator Thayer, I saw your hand up. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question on what is our projected increase in the 50? Right now, we did not budget for an increase in the 50. How are you going to acquire this additional million dollars in revenue? From what I've seen from this year, according to the appropriation reports uh, through September, you realize 82% of 
the four million that was budgeted for this year, where are you gonna come up with the extra million dollars? Right? You've also increased your appropriation by a million dollars. Well, it's, it's gonna be a combination of 10 extra thousand tons, plus the, the, the fees we're gonna have to be, tip fee, we're, the, what we're gonna to have to charge for the bringing the recyclables to the, to the system. Right, well, I, my, my question is, I understand the increased tonnage, but I'm not seeing the increased tonnage having that effect on your revenue line through September. I can, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll send you a detailed report that I get monthly on, on the operations that, that we have. Right. And I'll get that to you to show all the, re the breakdown of the revenues and the expenses broken down further for you. Okay, you're, you're uh, also going to realize an in increase in your tip fee next year. Uh, is there an increase, a contractual increase with the hauling fee for next year? Um, quite a fan, I, I don't have it in front of me, but I, I'll get that for you. Okay, because I, I'm very concerned that, you know, you're, you're putting a million dollars in there for revenue and a million dollars for appropriation. I understand you're gonna uh, erase each other out, but I, I'm not seeing the revenue that, that we're projecting. I, I don't see it being materialized. Uh, simple math for me to come up with another million dollars on, on uh, I'll give you the detailed report for all of 19 and I'll show you where 20 today. Okay. Back up these numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. You're welcome, sir. All right, any other questions uh, about the county treasurer's uh, department number six here? <coughs> Hearing none, the real property tax service uh, in a year over year increase of $4,800. Uh, <coughs> Probably, uh, unless anybody has any questions, we can move on. Kind of nominal there. Uh, county clerk, uh, an increase of uh, almost $91,000 year over year. And uh, the executive has explained uh, some of the uh, detail behind that in that he's making more realistic projections of actual revenues realized in that department versus what had been historically budgeted, um, and um, um, now can, just a just a question, and I forgive my. Has the new um, county clerk is this her first year? Yeah. That's her second year. That's right. So all right. So she, just well, just she one, walked into a budget that was already done for the previous. That's year. what I was trying to get to the bottom of. Yeah, and then really, I have to say the the revenue uh, adjustment was her um, suggestion. Her suggestion, and mm -hmm. you know when you look at the numbers over the adopted, we were at uh, one million two sixty five down to one million one seventy. Uh, that explains a lot of it. And I will say, even during this year, she's uh, you know held some positions open, and as you know, tried to increase revenue and adjust fees and things of that nature. So um, you know she's really done a great job with her budget, um, and. You know, when you look at, you know, what's happening here, she, you know, it's it's largely due to that, uh, you know, the fees as well as the contractual increases for the employees. There's really not a whole lot of uh, fluff in this budget uh, at all. And she's been so, doing a really good job. Since you just said that and reminded me, uh, was there any play in any of these departments up to here where, you know, the... the concept that we might be able to make an adjustment that you could bring to our Well, attention. certainly the obvious one here is, um, uh, or the two obvious ones are, you know, solid waste, as leg legislative Taylor has mentioned, but also uh, sales tax and the treasurer's budget. Uh, but no, uh, you know, these smaller departments, emergency management, real property, county clerk, uh, okay. you know, I think the revenue number's right on, and, and I think to take a risk for 100000 or so, it's, you know, it's, it's been pretty solid over the years. Okay, I just want to, you know, yep. Bring that up, and, and certainly looking forward, uh, the county attorney. Uh, nope, and uh, but we get into personnel certainly. Um, and I, I think you know personally, I'm. I think if the thirty-one and a half the million for sales tax is all we should go. You know, I, I, uh, I would agree under, I under the circumstances, um, and not adjust that up anymore. You know, just under the COVID pandemic circumstances and how we're tracking this year. All right, uh, county attorney. Um, as frugal as ever. <laughs> um, 
What's contributing to that 2800 up now? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that looks like it's uh, fine where it is. Um, personnel, yep. Uh, uh, let's uh, get into that, the two of you, if you could. Sure, I, and I would hesitate to go too far because uh, I've seen Nicole's presentation and it's quite thorough, <laughs> as, you, as you would expect. Um, and, and I will say we spent a lot of time talking about the health insurance line um, and, and what to do with that. And uh, you know, I, I think really a lot of that discussion should happen when she's here, but I will say this, I did get a little bit of good news. I believe our third quarter claims were down to the tune over last year to the tune of, I think the ballpark of three to $400,000. So we got some good news on our claims this last quarter. Um, but um, you know, when you get into that as a self-insured county, and, and you guys are all very familiar with this, um, you know, we really, it's, it's our best guess, and um, she's got a lot of data to back that up, and I think before we look at doing it one way or another, or making sure. any changes, we hear her out. No, absolutely. But as far as her office goes, and, and you know, the, again, it's uh, the same staff, there's, uh, the increases were largely maintenance uh, contracts and uh, things of that nature that are, Required and um, you know unless there's Sean anything you want to add there, but one big item in personnel's budget is you will notice the retirement line did go up two hundred thousand. Uh, we did get an actual estimate from the state, and their estimate uh, puts our retirement bill over all funds um, up over four hundred thousand over last year's bill. But and again, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, Sean. A, a lot of that is driven by market conditions. And uh, since that has been determined, the market has come back, so that could change again, but that's a snapshot in time of where we're at right now. Sure. Let's say it there. What uh, professional service are we divesting ourselves of? We took it from 115 down to 85. That's something that she uh, she offered up when we when we initially met with her. So I have no idea what it is. Um, I don't we don't have the notes, but I don't have a backup with me. But we can she, she can explain that with. I, I'm glad you just said backup. <laughs> uh, need to go back to the past. When the board of supervisors did the budget, we had a backup. You will get your backup. Everybody had a backup. We're going to see that. Yes, you will. Okay, thank you. Sure. Looks like Now, with everything going on with the public and stuff, have you seen a, a, a change in like telemedicine and different? Yes. Are people doing something? Because I know we wanted them to do something different. We couldn't get them to do it. We ended up changing their, um, what they had to pay when they went to the emergency room yes. and all that. Yep. It, that it, yeah, it's made an impact. She has the total number of usage uh, times used as well as the uh, cost that it actually saved as part of her presentation. And, um, you know, it's, it's not, you know, it hasn't caught on like gangbusters, but it went from nothing to now it's being used and, and it's, starting to, it's starting to catch on. Um, and and how, the emergency how, room. How do we, how we keep that motion going versus so people say, oh, this is open, we go back to the. Yep. Yep, and, and again, I would, um, I, the, the only reason I don't, I, I can take a crack at it, but I know she, Tuesday night, she's gonna really go into it in a great length. Um, it's really just keeping emphasizing with the employees that it's there. Um, the nice thing was that people have used it, and enjoyed using it, found it to be convenient, and probably will use it again. So it, it's just a matter of keeping it up, the wellness fairs that she does, the emails that go out, the, you know, it's just trying to keep that message going to people. and. Uh, you know, but it has, you know, certainly COVID did give it a boost. And she's got some good numbers that show what it saved uh, as far as what we didn't have to pay in clients. All set, Mr. Yeah. You know, and I guess in summation, uh, the past couple of years, also, uh, we did take it on the chin with, you know, some of our claims. Oh, yeah. I mean, we had some severe cases of people being hospitalized for long periods of time. and. Mm -hmm. So we were due for a year where that got to reverse. Let's well, yeah, and this year is, uh, you know, first two quarters where, where we did have some high cost claimants. Um, we had one that, uh, you know, as, uh, you know, ex hit stop loss, but because the nature of the claim, uh, there's some exemptions, exceptions to the stop loss policy, which Sean and I were pushing hard back, trying to get some answers to. 
Um, but you know, it, it is part of the policy. But the good news was that we did get some uh, favorable financials for just recently for the third quarter. Good. What's there for Tom? Under your other compensation slash raise, the department request was four hundred thousand dollars. You reduced it to fifty thousand. That's the discussion we had for uh, the oh. uh, contracts. Okay. Very good. Negotiations. Yep. All set. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Um, Board of Elections uh, down forty-four thousand. Any anecdotal? Just a quick one on that one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's deceiving. It's deceiving because uh, if once we get to data, um, they got a graph for a number of for uh, computer equipment. So they're showing seventy-two five in revenue in the, the Board of Elections budget. The expense is in data processing. Okay. And that's, I think, related to uh, some of the poll books and the security and yeah, the, the electronic poll books. Yeah, and, and you know, the big, the big craze is protecting this, the sanctimony of our elections and, and uh, so this is some of the money that the state's pushing down. I'm not saying I disagree with it, but that's, that's where it's coming from. Okay. Everybody else set there? Good. All right, Public Works. Um, Three funds involved, general, county road, and road machinery. Um, you, you, you net them all out, it's only a, a, an increase of 105,000. If, if you, but you, there's some the, the numbers there. on this report are the numbers that actually only affect the general fund side. For example, the, the county road or road machinery, those are the contributions from the general fund to the uh, county road road machinery. Mm -hmm. So if you were to try to compare these numbers to the actual county road and road machinery fund, you would not, they wouldn't correspond. These numbers simply correspond to the transfer out of the general fund to those two uh, funds. Well, then why don't you guys uh, expound on uh, your, some of your explanations there? I would say, like, with the, you'll see some big swings. Um, what, what Eric and uh, they did at DPW is they shifted they pay their employees out of different funds and cost centers. And what they did is they shifted salaries, they shifted Fringes. amounts of salaries yep. to the different funds. So yep. that's that's a lot of the, for example, the big decrease in the county road machinery fund, they shifted a, a, a large chunk of salary to the general and D fund. And that's why that one went up. Correct. Okay. It kind of looked that way to me when I saw, you know, back to the third line there, that I thought maybe one went from top to bottom there. Um, and uh, Legislator Pep, I just note that, you know, this is one of those where there's some pretty easy decisions to be made. Um, you know, as we've heard ad nauseum about our program with our vehicles and our fleet, um, you know, Eric is pushing very hard. I think he asked for three. There's two in, he asked for three. We left two in. Um, you know, he, he maintains that he's right at that point where then it's just all of a sudden it's not, you know, you're not going to see the cars every year. Um, you know, I look forward to that questioning Tuesday night. Uh, but we did leave two in there again. You know, that's, that's an easy thing. Two could come out. Uh, you can leave the two in. You know, it's, that, that's a decision that, you know, we, we got to make moving forward. But I thought leaving two in for the purposes of the budget discussion was a good place to start. Uh, underwater and sewer, last year we budgeted 125000 And of course, we had the increase in the water and the sewer fees at the jail. And we, what did we, uh, appropriated another $50,000, so we're up to one hundred seventy-five. Is that 200000 including all the buildings? So for, for the balance of everything else, it's just 25,000 and the jail is the 175. I mean, that's my recollection of the discussion, that there was a, a total number, um, but, it, but anything further than that, I think we'd have to say for Tuesday night, but I do, again, we did not try to cut line short and squeeze 20, 30,000 here or there on some of these items, especially ones that have become an issue in the past. So I would assume that's a safe number, but um, definitely make a note to uh, uh, Please, yeah. have Eric prepared on that topic. Thank you. All set, number nine? I Thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other discussion on uh, the three public work funds? 
There's no heavy machinery included in the operating budget. Um, you know, some of the usual cuts that, you know, to, uh, you know, we play the dance with the maintenance line where he asked for 1.3 and we settled on eight. Um, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Was there the company's the bike path goes from 7,700 in 2020 up to 60,000. Okay, that's, that's something you have to play, that's a salary show. Because actually, if you look down, they did have 40,000 last year because he had 33,000 in uh, temporary employees. So that was just a shift. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right, uh, on to data processing. Uh, we know that uh, Dan does a, a lot of good things with not a lot of money, and we often see in his departmental reports a wish list that's a page and a half long. <laughs> so it's, it's, some of it's finally come to roost here, it appears. Um, so, uh, why don't we, and I know you just mentioned something, you know, as a pertaining to Board of Elections, uh, but, Sean? Uh, like, like, of the one, the half of that, uh, net increase is the 70, 72 five from Board of Elections equipment. Um, the other major issue we have, and as you saw it the other day when I tried to send you an email, they are running new data lines. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, the squirrels are doing... Yeah, overtime on so, the uh, skins. That's why you're, you're, like I said, with his equipment, we tried to cut it back to the level it's been in prior years with only small increases, but the the big increases in his uh, supporting service and equipment lines is, is due to their running to a, I believe, internet data line between buildings, correct? Yeah, and really, one thing that really was impressed upon me in our discussions with the department head was, you know, the as we look to the future, and I know Chairman, you could probably talk about this, uh, is, you know, uh, as you shift to some outside parties and some of these maintenance contracts and not having the in-house, you know, that those are going to be required costs as we go forward, and, and they can talk about it a little bit more, but that's, that's definitely something as we go to the future, you know, we're going to have to keep in mind. And we need to. Is, is that something they can turn? No, no, go ahead. Is that some of the expense for the first first light contract? That is, yeah, that's correct. Until the private exactly. exactly. And the um, just can you explain that BOE uh, grant and, and the increase? Yes, that's that was the one. That's the board of elections. Oh, okay. Yeah. BOE is board of elections, okay. so All right. you'll see seventy two five in board of yep. elections revenue and this is each All right. Uh, there's no other question. Oh yes. Matt, and most a lot of the budgets that the departments put in, you hardly see any overtime. I mean, there's hardly anything. In this budget for data, you went from 7,500 to 15,000. Yes, and um, I won't say the gentleman's name, but I think we all know who it is. But um, there's a lot of after hours, weekend work that's done. Um, and, you know, we've been trying to hold back on it, but really, you know, that is an employee who is very unique to the county and, and really has a lot of the expertise. And uh, the, uh, the alternative to him doing that are some of these outside vendors, which will be actually even more expensive. So um, that's, that, you're right. That's one of the unique, uh, more rare situations where we are doing overtime. Um, and uh, I do feel it is necessary because of the specific nature of what that work's done. And Trevor? It has historically been 15,000 budget. We caught it back last year, but and they are doing transfers because they are they yeah. have exceeded that 75. Yeah. So again, um, kind of trying to be on the money rather than you know, yeah. uh, you know, we'll cut it in half and then you know, bust their chops all year try to keep it down this way. It's there, and, and oh, you know, oh, we don't have to go other other areas. And um, if I can add in, we've been doing all these live streams too, so that's probably another big portion of it. There you go. Is we always have to have one person. <coughs> Which even that we're trying to combat it by teaching Morgan and Vinny how to do yeah. it. So <laughs> everybody all set. Uh, let's start there. What's the uh, thirty thousand dollar increase in office supplies? That's a lot of office supplies. Yeah. I Once you see the backup, that lists everything right down to every mouse they're purchasing. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
It's certainly not for desks, I'll tell you that right now. It's got to be something. I can promise you that. some of these lines and we've pressed him on it and I explained to him you cannot come to me and ask for increases when everything was not spent the previous year and I know there's reasons why but I do believe data is similar to DPW in that there's a bit of a dance to the negotiation between the department and myself I think they at times will you know try to build in what they can knowing that it's going to get cut um, and and what I've said to him is you need to live with these cuts because that's where we're at and if you really need something and you run out of mid, mid year, you can always come to the legislature and state your case. Okay. Well, that, my, my concern is that uh, his computer software, he bumped that up $35,000. Is that to do with the IBM? We, the S400? He, he, he asked for $105,000. Uh, the adopted budget for this year was seven. Correct me if I'm wrong. Some, A lot some of, this, of that is BOE. Some of the software and hardware oh, okay. is but, built in for BOE. And a lot of this is, is getting on par with some of the software and the licensing and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, it's a matter of purchasing it, getting it deployed. And sometimes I think the goals for the year don't necessarily reflect what happens when you're dealing with issues that think breaking and whatever happens as you go along. You know, I think at, at the end of the day, this is something we can live with. And if there is something that comes up, along the way, you know, then make your case and let's bring it before the legislature. And I think if it's a worthwhile endeavor, then it, you know, likely it'll get funded. But, you know, we, it, it, we're not in the year where we can put our wish list into the executive budget. Right, right. I just get alarm bells when I see that much of a swing. Yeah. And, okay. I'm good. Thank you, great questions, because uh, those things stick out. Unless they're there. Oh. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I, I, I have trouble keeping it straight sometimes between some of the software needs, the hardware needs, and now you add in the new lines. I, I just don't have the expertise. So I, is Dan on? Uh, he's on for Tuesday night, or no? no? Uh, can we, can, we can bring him in if you'd like. Yeah, I mean, maybe if it's just for five, ten minutes. He'll need a next call by himself. Oh, there you go. He'll need the whole night, though, he's supposed to. <laughs> I, think we'll, I think it back up will explain a lot of this. Okay. A lot of I think we're good. Thank you. Let's start with Tom. Do you have one? Yeah, the miscellaneous supporting services went from 91.3, he asked for 179.6, that's a pretty big increase, and then you brought it down to it's, it's a combination. Some of those expenses are, are related to the BOE. Mm -hmm. um, some of it is related to the, the first light, is that the name? Mm -hmm. The first light lines that are going in. Okay. So that's why you're seeing the large, uh, the large increase there. Thank you. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Ismael. So, Sean, are they going to, uh, I know there's going to be a delay on the lines from the, uh, your building out to the jail, uh, but they're doing it, so evidently they're doing it. Is that in it included in this extra money, or not really? I know we, we had talked about budgeting the whole thing, but it was going to be in a phase in type of thing or whatever. I, I do believe that uh, Dan did budget. I don't know if he budgeted at all now. He did budget money. They are they doing it now. That was supposed to be delayed. They were going to go out to the jail and the public safety building until later. I don't know where they stand with the project, but I know he, he does have some money budgeted for first light in the 2021 budget. Okay, so he must, do, he must be doing the whole project now. Or whatever. And, and 
also just uh, to give you a little bit of comfort, um, we did email out the executive budget to the departments for feedback. And, and there's usually a few that say, whoa, 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 wait a minute, that absolutely cannot happen. Nine times out of 10, the data is top on that list. So if I hear anything from them that there's absolutely a real problem, I will certainly communicate that. We had discussed all that in the yeah. moment when we got off the right side. So. Absolutely. Thank you. Everybody sat on that? All right, uh, sheriff in jail, and uh, I mean, obviously something that you alluded to that stuck out to me, you know, right out of the gate here uh, when I saw this printout was um, the adopted revenue, um, you know, being down 45,000. Um, and we all know that this is, of many of our departments, this is a potential profit center. You know, if it's uh, managed properly and we, you know, get our regular steady diet of federal prisoners in and whatnot and and uh, got adjusted downward uh, under a different regime, uh, not yours, a uh, sheriff regime, uh, because of uh, that uh, leader's uh, reluctance to take on federal prisoners. And we know that uh, Sheriff Smith has certainly um, reversed that. Uh, so obviously uh, there's got to be some kind of rationale behind why uh, the two of you chose to reduce revenues in a world where we all might look at this as one that we could enhance revenues and maybe this is one of the areas we have that play that you spoke of. Yeah. Well, okay. Go ahead. From what the sheriff actually requested, we increased. We bumped it up a little. Um, we, and I can honestly say this is one of the spots that we, we really try to be conservative because of the unknown. We could go from 20 feds this week to zero next month. And I, what I would add to that is, you know, just to take a step back from what, at least what I've seen, the year number one, I believe we were at $1.4 million. That went all the way down, I think, in the ballpark of 100,000. Yeah. Now we're seeing the sheriff's estimate back up in the ballpark of 800,000. So for the current year, and yes, there is some, some, some flexibility there, but when, to Legislator Duchesne's point from earlier in the day, what are you trying to do to prepare for next year in some of these lines where, you know, one might drool and say, you know, oh, this is one where we can build ourselves, we held back. We held back. So, yeah, is there some, is there some cushion to go there if you so choose? Sure. Now he's, Sean, you told me through August he was at 600 something thousand on the federal? Uh, actually, to realize right that I have now is like 513, I believe. Oh, okay. But that was all, that was through August receipts. Yeah. And of course, if you sent the, the September claim, it would just be uh, submitted. So that'd be through eight months. If my figures are correct, that it's about 11 prisoners, federal prisoners per day over 365 days. I guess it, I, my so understanding is it, it fluctuates. Sometimes he has, has, has six, eight, and I, I believe sometimes he's been up as many as 20. Yeah, the, the last update I received from six days ago shows uh, total revenue billed across uh, federal at Seago, Fulton, uh, and it is, it's 635. So that's I, where I got that 600. Yeah, yeah. with additional. Uh, you know, correspondence from the sheriff of some uh, a new influx of some additional federal inmates, which could push us to a stronger finish to the year. Uh, but again, you know, it, given that good news, we still chose to try to, um, you know, also minding that there is some work that needs to be done up there. Sure, he was he was up to thirty seven uh, federal prisoners, and he also was getting some uh, prisoners from some neighboring counties. Uh, as of last Friday, so he, he was he was kind of up, I guess, a little bit. He was, water was, yeah, it's <laughs> certainly it's certainly a topic for discussion as we go yeah, through this I process. Yeah, I mean, and, and certainly, I mean, with him as well. But you know, I, I I think that you know he's cautious, you know, in, in overestimating, realizing he can be a profit center um, where. It was denied by the predecessor that this is not a profit center. Well, it's one of our few potential profit centers if you look at it. Exactly, know? and I think that you know, one of the things that I have a lot of respect for the sheriff is he, he understands both sides because for us, we look at it as, as a profit center, but he's also managing employees that are taking prisoners from New York City 
during COVID, and, 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 and his employees are working really hard to do that. And there's also an element of, you know, he's got a great team that are working hard to do this, and we have showers that need to be fixed. We have, you know, the host, the, the kitchen, the, the things that need to be done. So I think the sheriff strikes a great balance of seeing both sides of that. Mm -hmm. um, and understanding that he is a boost to the county, but also trying to fight for the needs and his employees who are, are, are they're the ones that are taking, you know, making it, making it happen. Legislator Heberle, you have a question? Uh, uh, Matt, in the last, last meeting we talked about a, a, a line item and uh, Tom we talked a little bit about a capital, a capital fund. Do you need anything more thought on that idea mm -hmm. at all? Yeah, I mean, that'd be something Sean would have to create. He knows that process better than I. If we created a separate fund for that, um, if it was, you know, maybe a percentage that was designated for improvements up there or whatever it may be, or a rainy day scenario, I don't think it's a... But the idea was that we would create, use some just extra, you know, revenue. I mean, it's like that, like that said, you know, it's 61 half dozen the other, you put it in the, it goes in the general fund. But what I'm looking at is, is if you put so much money away each year and into a fund that if one of the air conditioning units go and it's a five hundred thousand dollar repair and we have four hundred thousand dollars in the capital fund, you know, we're not hitting the, the fund balance with a huge amount, we're only hitting with a, little, a little bit this year. And the same thing with showers need to be repaired, kitchen need to be done, all this stuff, you know, taking a little, you know, when Jeff says I am probably gonna estimate um, revenue of five hundred thousand, we come up, we come in at eight hundred thousand. Will we say we or people decide on? Well, we're going to take fifty percent of that, put it into the capital, and put the other fifty percent into the, the fund. But it's not not a, a set number every year of how much we're going to put away. We just decide that well, this year we're going to put this much away. You know, what what can we uh, uh, afford to do so that when these big projects come there, we can we can afford them because we. If we want that place to, to help make revenue for us, we have to take care of it. And uh, you know, when you brought that up, legislator had well, certainly it was a progressive thought process. And then when I saw this, I said to myself, how, you know, if, if we're budgeting that, we're not going, our appropriations are going to exceed our income. Uh, we may have to wait and see how he actually does, you know, uh, the results of a, a year to, to do that. Uh, legislator Patel. Sean, on, on the rates for the federal prisoners, is, is that a reimbursement rate based on some sort of base to your planning, or is that just a, a broad brush where they come in and say, look, all over New York State we're paying $119? I think it's a fixed rate. rate. Yeah, it's a fixed rate it's per a fixed day. Rate that's a fixed, uh, but but uh, how is that? Is that a fixed rate that the federal government just says, look, this is what we're lie, paying this everywhere, is or is it based on your actual cost on a no, base no. year? It's, it's a fixed rate per day. Per Per, yeah, so this is, for you, you choose whether you want to have them. If you do, that's what you do. They accept the rate. Exactly. Okay. Um, and I will also say, just as another note, uh, the issue of vehicles. Um, would we could say he asked for three, we left one in. So, again, that could go either way, 50 grand, 100 grand. All right. Everybody set? All right. Um, uh, I'll pick the next two as a group, public and mental health, uh, both coming in under year over year, you know, from last year. So that's obviously a positive. She's going to be here before us. Um, I know in one of these, um, I believe it's the public health, uh, whatever we don't get reimbursed, we don't incur the expense on, correct? That's mental health. Or that's mental health. All right. And so... Um, and public health, I mean, I think it's just a good thing that she's coming in under. She can have her time in front of us. And unless anybody's got any questions. Sure. Yes. Matt, no, like you yeah. said earlier, I, I'm really concerned about the mental health. I mean, yeah. I see a huge decrease. However, I see a huge need in what's going on in the community. We, yeah. you know, we picked up a, a numerous amount of suicides. There's a lot going on in, 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 out there that I just, you, you see, you see this trend, and just and again, this is just a pass through. Um, you know, just well, I mean, take the the, the potential cut of three hundred uh, thousand to some of these programs. I mean, that that eats up almost your entire tax cap increase just to continue to provide these mental health services locally. Yeah. 
you know, and that's and that's the barrel of the gun we're facing now. It, it, it's 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 sad, and and I, the need. I, I mean, I could not emphasize it more. How heavy the last few weeks have been, and the stories and the things you're hearing in the community, and what people are struggling with. You know, whether it's a business being shut down, or fear about losing their job, or the isolation. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I just brought it up today on the call. We were asked on the call. You know what suggestions do we have to keep our numbers down in the Mohawk Valley? Because apparently the governor actually gave us a, a kudos today, which uh, you know uh, that is a whole other issue. And I said to him, I said, I'm not worried about COVID. I'm worried about the impact of the lockdown of COVID. And I want to know what's going to happen when, when the 20% come the cut comes, and now people are out of work, and schools are shut down, and, and you, you know all the folks that are working at these. You know, facilities that are keep taking care of kids no longer don't have jobs. That's the Fullmont Community Action. They're federally funded. You know, that funding's not there. So I think it can, I'm worried it's going to get a lot worse. It's so, part of but we don't have the capacity. I mean, I look at the budget, Matt, and, and overall, I, I'm really pleased with the whole budget until I saw the mental health unit. Yeah. The part there, and I said, you know, we're, we're missing, we're, we're so, something because. You know what's going on outside. Yeah. You know that something needs to be done. Well, and even in a perfect world where we're, we are fully funding programs, even at that point, it's not where it needs to be because we have one provider that's on the eastern part of the county, and you take somebody who's struggling, who lives in St. Johnsville, and you tell them they need to go to Amsterdam for mental health services, it's like going to New York City. You know, and then you add in the transportation issues, the cost issues, and then what happens? They stop getting the services. So, you know, even in a perfect situation, it's imperfect. So I agree with you. And I think, you know, we really should speak up about that as we go forward. And, and certainly when budget negotiations happen next year, because yeah, it's great that, you know, the governor's taking a hard line and, re and threatening to fine municipalities for not enforcing COVID guidelines and all this other stuff that's going on, giving color coded labels and things of that nature. But you know what, I'm not hearing anything about this other stuff. And, and that's the part that's really frustrating because people that are suffering, no doubt about it. It's part of that cure worse than the disease I, rhetoric. I used that line today. In the you know, uh, because that, that's kind of the byproduct of. And you know what? And this the is lockdown, the hard part. Preventing a pandemic, but creating other problems. Yeah, and, and this yeah. is the hard part too. Is is it's a one size fits all approach. Something happens in Orange County. Something happens in New York City, and you get a, this big blanket. Now there's a governor's task force, and you have this heavy handed approach. Rural counties like Montgomery County are not Orange County, are not New York City. We've had 230 cases. For the most part, yes, we've had six deaths and that's awful. But when you look at the amount of suicides we've had, the amount of overdoses we've had, and these other issues, I think you need, we, we need to put it in perspective and it can't be a one size fits all approach because it's clearly not working. And the, and the, right, the thing is the suicides are going from 18 year olds all the way to Yes. Yeah, we experienced that locally here, you know, recently, and it's about as sad as it gets. Yeah. All right, if no other questions on public and mental, uh, we'll go to DSS, and a uh, big drop there, uh, which is a rarity in our, I think, in, this, in the fourth year looking at this, uh, it's usually uh, a large increase, so you guys did a lot of uh, uh, trimming here, I can see, and uh, you did get into some of it, and we mentioned it as some positions, yep. until positions, and and obviously affecting certain categories that you feel might be affected by. And that's even even uh, including that, that conservative approach to the revenues on Medicaid administration. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's good news. Um, you know, I will say, you know, Jess, uh, who is a new finance person, uh, you guys have met, has really been working her tail off on this. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll likely have uh, a lot of information. We're really going program area by program area. Um, but yeah, and we built off of last year, which you remember and you said in your opening, over $300,000 of position cuts. There was two more position cuts. But again, I've been also holding positions vacant um, and, and they've been doing that as well. We've just recently given them some approval to do some new hires, especially in the finance unit, uh, because we had some, uh, that was, it was becoming yeah, an issue. Journal. That was leading to yeah. uh, you know, so the, the one delay in claims. claims. Uh, but that, as, as I understand it, has been rectified, and we've, you know, made given uh, just some clear direction that, you know, it's budget claims and, and reimbursements, and that is priority number one. Um, How has it been rectified? Did they hire somebody? No, no, rectified in that I believe claims are back to being on high. Yes, they did, they did hire someone. Yes, yes. 
Okay. Was it internal or? Yeah, it was a shift from another department. So um, yeah, so I, you know, obviously it's a huge, uh, it's a huge question mark right now. I mean, okay. there's no doubt about it, but um, you know, we'll get into it Tuesday night and uh, you know, take a look at the presentation and, and try to answer some questions. You know, it's every year DSS continues to be a learning process for me. Much better, Terry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, on your social services, you're showing a net reduction of 162 plus. Uh, is that wholly Montgomery County realized, or is that realized across state feds? I believe that's the local map, right, Sean? Correct. Okay. Thank you. But Sweet, you have a question? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you if you go to the revenue line from actual 2019. It's ten million four. In twenty twenty, we, we budgeted fifteen six, about a five point two million dollar increase in revenue. I mean, I, I, that's that's fine, but obviously we don't know what the actuals for twenty twenty are right now, um, and it's basically the same. It's it's a little bit less for your, your budget this year. Are we realizing these? Dollars. I mean, there's five point two million. We only have submitted claims, I believe, through August. But are, are we on track yeah. to 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 um, see the five point two million? That's my question. And that's even going to be a hard one to tell because there's holding the actual processing of claims at the state because of their cash flow issues. So I, I, I <coughs> man, that's a that's a big number. That's yeah. something that will we'll have. I, th I think should be brought up Tuesday to discuss with them. Okay. But we, because uh, yeah. we met, like I said, this department, uh, we sat down. We had four separate budget meetings with them, trying to nail down really the numbers. Maybe, numbers. You can, maybe you can pass that information out so they can have something. Be prepared for, right. for that question. Yeah, I mean, just because you know, you're talking. We really tried to really hammer this down. We're we're trying because uh, I'll be the first to admit we, for a couple of years, we we did not get accurate numbers. The budget was all over the place, right. and um, Jess has been going through each each of these one by one, and uh, I will relay that to her. And Sean, I mean, building on what the legislator Sweet brought up, what would, what caused the increase from um, nineteen to twenty? Well, you know, it, was it because of the slowdown in the claims and what we actually recognized one year versus? Uh, the other year? I do believe part of that was some of that 4E, if I remember correctly. Uh, remember we, were, we, we, we realized that 4E is a complicated claiming process that requires court documents to be in sync with federal documents and we brought in some training. They've since been bringing in good money with that. Um, I think that's part of it, if I remember my conversation uh, with Jess, but even that is broken up over a number of revenue lines, so it's hard to nail it down. Um, but, um, you know, I think, I think you know, I think that was a big part of it, but... Uh, All right. Well, we'll let's take a suite of uh, lead us on that charge Tuesday when we get there with the <coughs> question. Sure. Matt, with the... Um, we have plan on moving into the new recorder building in the near future. Yes. Do you see a reduction in some duplicated services between the two, and are we... <coughs> The last thing that I want to do is yes. see anybody lose their jobs, yeah. or we kind of looking for people to be able to to trans, you know, to move. So one example would be we did budget a full year's worth of payments at the Riverfront Center, so we didn't have to come back and ask for that. Um, so there is some, some duplication there. Um, also, we did take out some of the additional funding uh, for the building itself because they still have three hundred thousand dollars to work with and. Uh, before I give you any money, I want to know what we're getting back through the claiming process on the purchase of the building and the 300000 that we're spending now. So, um, you know, that's, that's a portion of it. Um, but uh, as far as, you know, uh, we're trying not to fill any positions that we know may be in jeopardy. That's also another item. Which, again, is why they need my specific approval to even post anything at this point. Again, the last thing I want to do is see us move into a new building and a person get a job and say, oh, since we're moving a building, we don't need a receptionist because we already have one. Exactly. You don't have a job anymore. Exactly. You know? Well, and I think in any of those situations, I think we would look to move internally. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah. 
All right. Um, no, no more questions on social services. Uh, weights and measures looking uh, pretty tight with last year. Mm -hmm. um, youth, alternatives, incarceration, veterans. Just one thing to note there, we did take the money out for the youth day. I'm not sure this next summer we'll be in the back to having a Clear thousand kids on the county property. So I, I was asked whether or not to put sheep and I just said, you know what, uh, we'll get back to that maybe in a couple of years. What was the cost on it? I think it was about 10,000. Uh, right. we, we eliminated a five thousand dollar revenue and eliminated a fifteen thousand dollar expense. So the net was ten. What was the revenue? If, uh, if you go up, it was the gifts and donations. Thank you. Uh, history and archives up ten grand. Yeah, it's all all uh, non discretionary. No, okay. That was a salary adjustment. That was for the non bargaining okay. Uh, conflict defender, down almost 18. No, this is an actual new department that you just passed a resolution for last month. Correct, yes. correct. So, yes, they're not, what the, uh, they're not down against anything. <laughs> no, what it, what it is, the reason that the, uh, with this, with this well, the reason your revenue exceeds the uh, appropriation is the, the offset to that is, uh, is the fringe benefits for those salaries. Okay. Everybody okay on these? Economic development, up uh, just under 10 grand. Yeah, not discretionary items. Not so discretionary. DA, same thing? That's my understanding. Okay. Is there a built-in for a race this year? For the DA? Yeah, that one comes up a lot. Oh. <laughs> I'm not, I, uh, to to I my knowledge, that the state has not released that. I'll shoot her an email. Report back Tuesday. I'm just. I I don't know. I, I, the last two years have had that. You know, we'll we'll get that later it's, it's not yeah. usually a small one. Right? No, it's usually a chunky. All right. Um, probation down uh, just under eighteen grand. Nothing really too noteworthy there. But yeah, the one thing I would say about there is the raise the age funding. Again, the funding from the state is in there. It's been they've committed to funding that new program. Uh, there's been scuttlebutt that you know that might be an area that's cut, but we have absolutely nothing in writing where uh, to indicate that it actually is. Has the bail reform changed that something? Again, just like a lot of these hot button issues, the impact locally has been minimal. You know, bail reform certainly, as far as, you know, inmates and uh, the normal type of inmate, they, yeah, that's down big time and people are being released. But, you know, as far as raising the age, we've had just a couple cases, nothing major. All right, a public defender up about 148K. The biggest thing there is uh, they did build in, because they have a number of grants, these, these IL, ILS grants. And to, to fund all these part-time defenders, public defenders. The state is supposed to be funding these 100%. Mm -hmm. um, we did reduce that about 15, so that's why you're seeing the increase. That's mm -hmm. one, this is one department that potentially is going to see that reduction. But again, don't know for sure, right, Sean? Right. So it was built in but here. talking with the department, um, they feel more comfortable this it all. Right. And also, I would say that be given the grant structure of this department, it's a little more straightforward, right. a little more easy to predict. Let's let it tell me. Uh, and we're not using grant funds to increase people's salaries and stuff like we have in the past? Um, no. I mean, there's one specific case uh, where I suggested a different uh, uh, title rather than an increase in a position. Uh, but yes, there you are correct. That is not happening. As long as everybody's all set, we'll move uh, the coroner up, up 50. Uh, Legislator Kelly? I have a big thing on coroner. Okay, let's go. Uh, so this year we had to increase substantially, and our amended budget came to about 111000 of uh, expenses because of increase of 
medical medical the, the cost of autopsies. Yeah. yeah. We did, I, the left, like I said, for the twenty budget, we bumped it up twenty thousand. For four, we went up to sixty, and I bumped it up another ten thousand this year. So why? The last couple of years, we've been averaging almost it. well. Nineteen was eighty thousand. It looks like we're going to approach eighty this year. Again. For medical fees. So if we're approaching eighty, and it looks like we're going to do eighty. Why we have seventy? Because it has to still slow down. Oh. <laughs> also, I would note that I believe there was a request for an increase in salary here. Correct. That was not included in this budget. Um, you know, it might be different for the deputies, but I do believe an elected coroner cannot have a salary change during a term. Uh, now, I'm not sure how exactly that would apply to a deputy, but just for full disclosure, that was requested, not included. So if you get a call that uh, I'm not a nice man, that is uh, the thought process behind the decision. I'll set number one. Number one, as the card would say. Okay. Any other questions on the corner? Uh, legislator, legislature and auditing, we went through our own a couple of weeks ago. Purchasing. Uh, nothing too alarming there, 2500 Stop DWI lot. Grant for service, any type thing. So. All right, and then you see the map uh, using 100 quarter from the uh, increase from the, or decrease, excuse me, from um, the fund balance uh, creates the net tax levy increase of uh, just under 562000 so, uh, any other items for discussion? Anybody would like to run uh, amongst ourselves or against the uh, executive or, or treasurer before we meet part of their crew on Tuesday? Looks better there. Uh, just going back to the probation, I see there's a new position created, a part-time position. Uh, part-time probation officer. Wasn't that nice that from a mid-year adjustment? I believe that's a mid-year adjustment to, that happened to resolution okay. this year. I'll, I'll, I'll verify that for you for future. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't gone through it line by line. Am I going to find more like that? Uh, I, I don't think you're going to find a whole lot more like that because we didn't do it. But I'll tell you this, and I don't know a legislator there if you've experienced this before. But I've, I've tried to take on Lucille a time or two, and I've lost bitterly every time. <laughs> yeah, but I work on a truck. Oh, I like that angle. <laughs> Thank you. All right, if there's no other uh, uh, items for discussion, uh, motion to adjourn. Anyone? Legislator Sweet. Legislator uh, Hedwell with a second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all.